All right, I'm recording. This is being recorded. So yes, uh, just so you know, we'll we'll be YouTube. recorded. So if there's anything that you uh, potentially don't if want, you, if you want to cuss, go ahead and get it out now. Go ahead and get it out now. Uh, if there's anything. Well, we are uh, recording, so go ahead and cuss now. Yes, that's the, wrong way. the other the other thing is that if there comes a point, we usually say this, especially at this particular meetup, if there comes a point where we need to uh, mute and stop recording, I can or, stop recording. Or redact something after yeah. the fact because you shared something sensitive. Yeah, you just need to let me know. Please let us know. Yes. <laughs> Due to the nature of this meetup. Right. Um, so other than that, um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, pull up my, uh, my thing here. Throw it full screen. All right. <laughs> this is uh, Welcome to Practical Security. Um, tonight's topic is going to cover HID attacks and you. Um, so we'll go ahead and get First, before we get started, uh, I know we've kind of gone back and forth and talked to each other. Just a quick overview. If you just introduce yourself real quick, um, we'll start right here with the uh, with Mr. El Jefe. Okay. <laughs> Brian, uh, he and I work together at Classic Information Security, um, and Shrop and I and some others are the guys that started HP5. So we'll just walk our way down that way. Uh, Gabrielle, I uh, work with uh, Hermes Consulting, uh, doing different IT tech consulting. Carl Hola, uh, principal owner of Hermes Consulting. Andy, uh, work for Southern Companies based out of Florida, work remotely for them, website development. Cool. John Aarons, work at uh, Wells Fargo, um, just like engineering. And Mark Shropshire, I am here recording tonight. Welcome. Welcome. And enjoying the meetup, enjoying all the hacker people. And I'm Josh Jenkins, aka the Huggable Hacker. Uh, <laughs> and so let's, let's not forget uh, Mr. Barkas. And Mr. Barkas, would you please introduce yourself? Hey, my name's Mike Barkas. I am a web developer for Classic, also, and with an interest in uh, web application security, just trying to learn more and become a better developer. Thank you for joining us remotely, Mike. Thank you for posting the link. <laughs> I'll, I'll shop, I assure you. And thank you all for joining us in person as well. Um, so, basic overview. Uh, yeah, Huggable Hacker. Uh, funny story about how that got started, if you don't know. Um, I was sitting there one day, and I was telling someone that I do scary stuff, and I'm a very scary person. I do scary hacking stuff. And I looked around, whipped around, and said, there's nothing scary about you. You're more huggable than anything I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> is it that strong? I don't remember being that strong. Okay. It gets stronger every time I retell this story. Uh, okay. The fish, the the fish that keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Uh, InfoSec analyst slash security enthusiast. Um, I work at Class Graphics again. A few people here, and I moonlight somewhat here at HP5 as well. Um, the rest of that, uh, if you want to check anything out, hugglehacker.com uh, or find me on Twitter. Let's, uh, let's just jump right into it. Um, someone, uh, Brian, uh, in the meetup group actually requested that we have a discussion, uh, but he's not here. He hasn't shown up. So uh, if you guys would like to do that, we can have a quick little uh, His questions were more around certification and, you know, how to make, you know, what should we do? You know, some questions like, is this what we should do? Is this some training we should do? If you guys would like to do that, we can, or we can skip right past it. Uh, your call. Let's see, Brian, let's see if Brian shows up because he, I think he is RSVP. Yeah, he did. He did RSVP and he, he was very active in yeah, talking. So let's so. save it for the end. Okay. Let's cool. see if he shows up. We're back. Okay. So we will go ahead and move that down. So we'll go uh, go ahead and move to the next one. Um, so the t topic of this is HID. So ask yourself, what is HID? Uh, HID stands for Human Interface Device. Device. Um, and again, I'll let you read that. But if you want to have a really good or really good analogy for it, is uh, anything an I/O device. So we were talking about biometrics. That's that's an input device. Uh, any keyboard, mice, an output device would be say our lovely printer over there. That's an output device. But that's also a human interface device. Any, um, I guess, ones and zeros to flesh. <laughs> so if so does that kind of cover that, I guess? Okay. But specifically tonight, we're going to be focusing more on Arduino USB devices that mimic keyboards. So 
Um, tonight, if you're not scared about USBs and devices that are really small, you're going to be terrified by me in the night. So I just go ahead and preface that and apologize <laughs> because that's that's the nature of this talk tonight. So um, again. We'll go through uh, types of threats and attacks, hardware, software, and we'll do a small, small demo. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and pull that out real quick. There he is. Brian, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Doing well. Actually, we'll go ahead and move that back to the beginning of this. Mm -hmm. way, like, no, no, you're fine. You're fine. Guys, this is Brian. Hey, how's it going, man? Brian, if you'd like to introduce yourself after you get yourself settled, that would be mm -hmm. perfect. I can hang on for a second if you'd no, like. Awesome. So, oh, yeah, I'll catch up. Okay. Um, so, we'll. Uh, <laughs> Actually, we're gonna we were gonna move this to the end of the discussion, but if you'd like to, we can uh, go ahead and talk no, about no, it. Go, right, go. go ahead with your thing. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll do a we'll do a demo real quick of a particular type of attack that can also well, it's not really an attack. Let's back up. It's more of a system administration that can be taken into and screwed up into an attack. But it's more system administration, and I'll explain a little bit more about that once we get there. So it's a it's a great little uh, great little tool that I've used uh, in in spirit of this. So and have, again have a couple of takeaways uh, and go from there. Again, there are cookies right there if anyone would like them. Mike, I'm sorry, I will save some for you if you'd like. So I'll just get a a web cookie from my browser. Thank you. <laughs> is that uh, Mike Marcus? That is Mike Marcus. I'll send you some session cookies. Those are my favorite flavor. Oh, yes. you know it. So um, we'll start off by talking about uh, attack types, uh, and these are we'll specifically focus more on hardware at this particular moment. Uh, hardware that we would use generally in this instance, uh, and we'll go through this. Uh, we'll go through com both commercial and um, uh, some homebrew devices, homebrew style stuff. Uh, last uh, last meetup we talked about uh, Hack5 and some of the stuff that they put out. They put out some really cool stuff. But one of the devices they put out commercially available is a USB rubber ducky, which is an Arduino-based uh, HID device that mimics a keyboard, which goes back to our focus. So you plug this in, I mean, you look at him, this is this guy right here. Looks just like a, looks just like a standard USB that you plug into your, plug into your device, but, um, based on a couple of uh, software things that we'll get to here in a second, this actually will mimic and act as a keyboard and do a thousand keystrokes a minute. So we'll get into that in a second. And then, you know, but then again, this is all based on um, Teensy Arduino devices. So anyone familiar with Teensy Arduinos? Nobody. Oh, right, it's okay. Fair enough. So uh, this is all based on this. This is just a flavor of Team Star Arduino. This is four generations of it. Um, there's a couple other generations that are out there, and I've actually got a picture of something that I'm working on right now. Uh, Team Star Arduino based. We'll minimize that. Where did I put you? Here we go. And ah. I'm actually working on a little bit of this right here. That. Right, this this big guy right here. You see, he's four pins long. He's literally you could fit about three or four of these on a on a quarter. That's how small these things are. That is the brains of just about any Arduino out there. Um, so this is a Team Arduino. You could actually fit the attack that I'm talking about right now on that with a little bit of creative flash. So we'll just keep that in mind, and uh, we'll we'll move on from there. So. Um, but this is a, the, the, what you're looking at right there is actually a, another th talk and thought that I'm having with, uh, with uh, HID cards, you know, little badge cards with badges or something. Mm -hmm. But I'm having a little trouble with wiring. So if anyone's good with wiring and schematics, please come find me after because I have terrible schematics. Uh, so we're going to close that out. Uh, and if you have any questions or concerns at any point during the meetup, please feel free to stop me and just ask me because I am happy to do that. We'll get back into that. So rubber duck, Team Sierra Arduino generation one, two, three, and four. Um, and then software type attacks, okay? Um, software that's used for uh, HID attacks. Uh, anyone familiar with Kali Linux? Cool. 
Kali Linux. Kali Linux makes a version that you can put on a Nessus uh, version, Nessus Tablet 10, Nessus Mini Tablet, and Nessus Mobile Phone. That if you mean Nexus, am I saying Nessus or Nexus? You're saying Nessus. There is a such thing as a Nessus Tablet. Please forgive me. My, my semantics are off. Nexus, Nexus Tablet. <laughs> Both tablets, many and normal size, 10 and 7. And it's so nice. confusing, that whole landscape. Yeah, I'm sorry. I like, I like the soft X there. I'm sorry. Soft X. <laughs> <laughs> but what you can do is you can flash these devices and uh, create a carefully crafted attack that when plugged in will act again as a USB device and do any number of attacks that you can potentially craft using Mimikatz, uh, Metasploit, standard keyboard attacks, deep reverse DNS shells, stuff of that nature. And again, everything, everything that I'm talking about is based on the research of the SR labs uh, and Bad USB. Uh, Bad USB came out a few years ago, and uh, again, all the research that you see and all the attacks that I'm explaining stem from that particular set of ideas. Any questions so far? Okay. I'm going to stop real quick and we've had a few more people jump in so if, uh, the people who have jumped in feel free to say hello. We'll start over here with uh, this young man over here. Yeah, uh, Mark Belair. Um, I work with a couple of these guys including Jenkins over at Classic. I'm a people developer. I'm curious about what you guys are talking about tonight. <coughs> Brian Smith, and I'm a contractor here in uh, Concord, in Charlotte, uh, in the .NET stuff. Uh, I think it's done right. I'm Jeff Gilbert, uh, work in the uh, medical field in the patient monitoring. So, so you say that, I have a quick question. There's been, a, there's been some news recently, uh, in the last week or so, about stuff that's going out in Hollywood. You got any, do you have any, any weigh in on that? Wait a minute, what are you talking about? Uh, so recently there was a hospital. You should, you should pull it up. West Hollywood. Oh, you got that link? I'm fine. Like ransomware. Yeah, there's ransomware mm -hmm. that, that made its way onto a West Hollywood uh, network and has completely locked out a, uh, a hospital. Uh, the ransom was like $3.6 million. Or I don't know how they, many. They paid up today. Exactly. They paid up today. But they only paid 17000 Well, yeah. So, but that they, negotiated. Was, yeah. they negotiated it down. But any thoughts on you know that kind of thing, uh, Jeff? Well, I do know the FDA is looking into security. I think this year it'll be big for the medical. Yeah. So when you say it's gonna be big, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? I by think it? they're gonna crack down on all all vendors and, and say, hey, you need to secure your equipment. Okay, cool. Um, that's just my thought. All right. Question on that regarding the FDA looking at that: Are they wearing under 22 CFR 11 like other things are? Somewhat with you here. All right, that hasn't been updated since like 2003. Yeah. Jenkins, yeah, we keep talking amongst ourselves. Jenkins is taking a quick break here. You know, the I should start the music <laughs> so we don't hear him in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the intermission music. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, having, having worked in the law enforcement sector as far as for IT for a while. Um, you know, they have a very strict security policy. The FBI has a, has a public security policy that kind of lays out on the law enforcement agency. Must, that, you know, set up their network to basically to try and prevent ransomware and different things. So I don't know, you know, medical industry is going to have to go the same way that, you know, be audited and be, you know, I work at a flash sheriff's office and be audited every two years. If the FBI or state come in and make sure that, you know, every single policy that say, well, okay, here's the, here's the regulation. Show us how you need it, and then go and go and find and find the people that try to hold them there. So that's one way to stop it because you have no choice but to pay the ransomware. Big difference in hospitals are you may have ten different networks. It's one of the hospitals, but the vendors have their independent networks, and they sometimes tie together and sometimes don't. Yeah. You know, so you get to. Well, that that, that could be a mess. <laughs> I mean, that gets messy, don't it? It does. Yeah. But your weakest link, and they always say, is uh, like, like, like we always work at Sheriff's Office. So we were never worried that our physical network was going to be compromised. We knew we had our network tightly secured down. 
but we had other municipalities and other stuff tied to us. So the question is, how secure is their side? Because it's the weakest link that's going to come into it. And a lot of times, that's it's a phone from a contractor that's working for you, or if it's something, it's not even if you've done your best to secure yourself now, but like the vendors, you know, don't put a vendor on your network if they can't apply to security policy and all of that. And it's, uh, you almost have to be, you almost have to have a security person working for your company and have them be paranoid and, you know, have to open stuff up as opposed to, well, what do we have to lock down to today's world? It's a scary world out there. I think a recycling department would be potentially the, the biggest threat to the sheriff's department. I, I think those guys, they come in here and they empty our band. I like those guys, but they they don't seem too secure. The, who? the recycling department? Uh, I like them, but I bet their network's pretty loose. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned the weakest link is, you know, the, the less secure of the partner thing. The weakest link is the human. Yeah. And so we, you were talking about the recycling, but yeah, you get a weak link there, somebody's corrupted, or you know, uh, yeah. so you know, I mean, the weakest link, in my opinion, is the human. There's a, and it's funny you should bring it up. There's a, there's a push, at, at least what I've read, to make it what they call a human firewall. <laughs> and the human firewall is, again, letting or training people and making them aware of threats right. through constant testing of them, which is, you know, something that I, in, in my particular job is I do, you know, on a very frequent basis, I will, I will push the bounds of our training and I will, and I hate to use this term, but I've heard it before. You have to humble the user sometimes. <laughs> there are people, there are users and we have, we've all had them before. And there are clients, users that are very sure of themselves and, to humble them is sometimes the only way to do it. Now, yes, you, you do that, and then you have to follow that up with, hey, this is why this happened. Now, let's make sure it doesn't happen in the future by showing X, Y, Z. This is why this failed. This is why you failed in your, in your vigilance. But that's okay. You're still human. Let's make sure that that human firewall is strong. Make sense? So, and was there anything else out? From the from out there, I have an interesting story about that um, goes along those lines. Client just had a uh, IT security audit performed, and so the auditor shows up. They ride on the elevator with the HR, you know, the lady that's over HR, and you know the lady, the HR lady does not know this lady that's on the elevator. Lets her in the office, you know. So then the the this is the security auditor then the, the hr lady goes in her office fires up her computer and walks away the security lady walks in the hr office and sits at the lady's computer and just starts fiddling around just to prove a point just like you said yeah. all of a sudden the hr lady comes back what are you doing sitting my desk when well, you left it on <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah and they got hammered on that as they should. No, absolutely. Yeah. Thank, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I mean, that's just, it's real simple. I mean, you know, she gets there, she fires up her computer, and she goes and makes call. What a lot of people do. And then, boom. I'm guessing she has a Windows machine, and she hasn't learned the value of control. No, no, no. <laughs> Windows now is uh, strict the lock screen. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. So, no, very cool. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. So, we'll, uh, Run back right back into it. Uh, so we've gone over uh, the type of hardware we're going to be uh, viewing tonight. I managed to get my managed to get my duck, my rubber duck, um, naked now, so you can see it. And I'll actually I'll bring it out there for you. <clears throat> this again, this is a Arduino device um, that nice and small fits inside a USB. Can we uh, throw a light up here somewhere? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So nice and small uh, Arduino device, uh, you know, very simple. Um, payloads are put right on this uh, Lesti card right here, um, and again, I've got it in its standard standard factory format right now. Uh, you can do a lot more with this. You can uh, put a bit of firmware on here that will make it act as both an HID device and a mass storage device. So you can get a little more advanced attacks right there. So one of the attacks that I'm planning on. 
<laughs> um, is doing a, uh, a mini cats. Again, I mentioned that earlier, but a way to think a mini cats, what it does is if someone leaves their computer unlocked, you take this, I'll turn this off, I'm sorry. You plug this into an unlocked computer and it will, in memory, pull and dump their past usernames and passwords on the flash drive. And then this thing, 10, 15 seconds, pull it out and walk away. Now, the problem with many cats is that it's known by most antivirus softwares. It's going to pop very quick. The thing we want to use here is try to figure something else out that's not going to get popped. So, thank God. And then again, most of these attacks are based on Windows, and we can do some Linux or OS, OS X attacks. Thank God, in Windows, they have something called Sys Internals. Is <laughs> anyone familiar with Sys Internals? Yeah. There's something called Proctum. Anyone ever use Proctum? Yep. You can, a uh, similar attack, what you use is you call Proctum. Have to do proc dump, save it to the drive. Again, 10 to 15 seconds. Proc dump, pull it back. Go back to your uh, your machine. If you again, if this is a you're waiting right there for it to happen, pull it off. Well, proc dump depends. Um, I, I say that with a caveat that this only has a transfer rate of about 150 kilobytes. That's so kind of slow. But if you had something like a command and control server somewhere back out that you can that you had out somewhere else, you could just transfer it that way. But assuming in a perfect world, it's pulling out 42 megabytes pretty quickly. Uh, you wait there 10 to 15 seconds, pull it back out, and then walk away and go back to your attack machine. And boom, you use Mimikatz, pull it out, and it says, hey, here's my lame password. So that's a type of attack that you can do with that. That's, a, that's, that's, that's for another talk and another time. And I will de definitely demonstrate that for, that for you all because that's, a, that's actually a pretty scary thing. And that's a good way to, again, like I said, I hate to use it, but that's a good way to humble someone as... Uh, Brian said that you know the person who sits down at the desk is like, "Hey, I got your password. Are you a privileged user?" Well, I'm an HR. Well, then you're a privileged user. Guess what? I'm taking that and I'm going to wreck your net at that, that point. And not only am I going to humble you, I'm going to humble everyone else in this room. All right, all right. So we don't actually want to humble people as a posture. That was a quote from somebody at OWASP. You know. That's why I said I don't like to use it, but well, I've used it four or five times, so I so, so stop. <laughs> Um, once to educate people, not just humble them. Mm -hmm. um, that, there was a, a very complex uh, attack method that a security person from Lowe's demonstrated at OWASP a few months back. And he was talking about using this when you had a developer that just wouldn't pay attention to um, best practices and, and kind of, you know, my code's perfect, nobody's ever going to hack me, kind of thing. And you use that phrase sometimes you got a humble developer. I think the the guy doing the presentation had a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, and I don't think that gives a good name to InfoSec. So I really don't want to use that phrase. So I will not use I will I will attempt to not use it again. All right, good. Sure. If, if I do a huggable hacker. If I do if I do <laughs> so it doesn't really it go doesn't, with it. It doesn't you know, it does. so, so, so if I do use it again, please call me out. Okay. Thank you very much. I know I know I know one, two. Three guys would definitely call me out. Good, good. But I, but I expect no rapport. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Not just humble. Yeah, there we go. Good rapport. So that's the other. <laughs> yeah. So moving on. So uh, or report tag. Report tag. Yeah. yeah. Report, like report, report tag. Is that like the Colbert report? Report. Okay. Report tag. <laughs> uh, any questions so far about anything, any software or hardware that I've shown so far? Okay. So this not, yeah. this thing that you you're showing us. You mentioned Hack Five. Where I mean, is Hack those guys aren't the only who are making this. Who else is making this? They're, they're the ones that make this particular commercial device right. that I'm showing. Show. Yes, they, they they make that particular one. Again, mm -hmm. I, I try to show both commercial and homebrew devices. I don't have I don't have a homebrew one. The, the, the picture I showed you earlier with the TNC AT Tiny, which is again you get there about four or five. That's something that I'm working on myself, and it's based off of. Uh, some some work by a guy named Sam Camcar. Um, he's out in California. Really, really sharp guy. You know, he was um, he actually was put in jail for a couple of years because he did something called the Sammy worm. I don't know if you remember back in MySpace days, there was a worm that spread across the fastest spreading worm in history, uh, and it hit just about everybody on MySpace within about 24 hours. And what it would do is it would get onto your site. It would say you're listening to terrible bands. No, it would say it would say and it would say and Sammy is my hero at the bottom of it, but then it would go into you. <laughs> it would go into your contacts contacts and spread that to them, 
and it would say that on theirs, and then vice versa, vice versa, and vice versa. That's brutal. It was very <laughs> him as a friend. So what? It was that him as a friend. Exactly. So not only did he get the most friend likes in 24 hours, he uh, he drew the uh, you know using this word again, he drew the ire of the FBI very quickly for that. Um, sure. Uh, you know, and so he was he was restricted from computer use for a couple of years, uh, <laughs> fined a little bit of money, and uh, just generally not had a good time for a little bit. But once he came back, he devoted his time to teaching people more of the uh, the practical side of things instead of just the hey, I'm going to screw with you side of things. So, you know, you. so what? At least he didn't go out shooting. But no. Um, so um, one of the like this one. How much is this? I like that. Uh, we'll we'll give that back. We'll give that back. Power, power, lumen, Albert. I like that. <laughs> Camera shine in people's eyes. Sure. Look at that. All right there. <laughs> so um, one of the things he one of the things he did was uh, he uh, showed Fox. based on so the bad yeah. based on the bad USB exploit. Uh, you can take a teensy Arduino like I showed you earlier. Actually, let's back it up right now. The non-commercial. You can. The difference between commercial and non-commercial. This is about forty-three dollars, where you can get a Tinksy Arduino for about two or three. Uh, if you, you know you know the Arduino program, and you're good to go. He, he made most of his stuff available online and open source, so you can go in and hack it together, do what you need to do to make it make it work to your usage. Um, this, as opposed, what well, as opposed to what I'm going to show you, is they've already put a bunch of work into it, made it super simple, the programming language to make a make a little bin file, and you know it's all ba it's very basic. It's a basic basic language. So you take if you understand basic as a language, then you can write uh, attacks for the duck very very simple. So, but I find again for demonstration purposes, it's easier to use a rubber ducky. But for my own intrinsic value and doing my kind of thing, it's better to use a teensy because I learn more doing something that I have to put together and I have to hack together. And I find that true to be able in a lot of different things in life. So that's my, that's my uh, plug. The hack, hack all the things. Uh, questions so far? So, go into the demo real quick, um, and the name of the demo is Podsler Redo. <laughs> little French. Um, I like I like using different words for different things. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna keep laughing at you. Yeah. Go go. <laughs> so, um, is anyone familiar with Podsler? Did, did anyone ever have a an old Gen 1 iPod? We're talking about that big clunky thing that uh, Steve Jobs popped out at that con. He's like, the future of oh, music. Yeah. Do you remember that? Okay. Back in those days, the iPod was more of an MP3 player than it was an iPod. <laughs> if anyone understands what that means. Uh, you could This thing, you could throw music on it, throw text files, you could throw just about anything on it. I mean, it was a mass storage device that just happened to play music. Well... Like anything, as soon as it came out, people were figuring out how to break it. One of the first things they did was something called pod slurping. Now, pod slurping is a carefully crafted piece of language, scripting language. Uh, it can be Ruby, Python. In this case, it was Python, I believe. Uh, and what it would do is it would search for the device name or the, the iPod name, because each iPod has a unique name. So when you plug in the first time, you'd see iPod, X, Y, Z, whatever it was. So you would program your language to do that, and each time it's plugged in, this script, which, which was always running in the background using very resources, would say, hey, it's plugged in. Let me go and pull anything down that's changed. The first time you run it, it's going to pull everything down. But the next couple times you run it, or any subsequent time you run it, it's going to only pull the changes. Does that make sense? So you're essentially getting anything that you downloaded off iTunes on your computer. Now, as we know, that's kind of changed a little bit nowadays. It's just a touch harder to do, and Apple's locked that down just a little bit. So that's kind of where I get the idea for pot slurping part two. So let me set it up for you a little bit. Uh, the hardware we're going to use in this is a uh, Windows 7 uh, VM. Um, and I, this has been tested on Windows 10, so it does work as well because there's not a whole lot of difference in the scripting bits and the way the file structure works between 7 and 10. 
it just looks a little different. They didn't really change the, the core of it. They just changed the glossy veneer. Is that, is that good? Glossy veneer. Uh, and again, I will, like I said earlier, I'll be using a USB uh, HID for the ducky. Uh, a couple parts of this is first part. I'm going to be creating a loop, and let me let me make a plug here real quick. I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to be getting a little bit more into code than we did than we do with most any, with most of my other talks. Uh, I like you know very low level languaging. You know we're talking about batch filing, you know batch scripting. Well, we're not going to be doing much batch scripting because this is not a Unix Unix based system. This is more you know Windows is I mean, batch based. So. Uh, very low level. I mean, if you want to get up, you can get up into the higher level languages and make this just pop in like a hundred different ways. It's really cool. But again, keep it to keep it very low level. We're just going to use batch um, I even thought about doing a little VPS, but yeah, we'll just do we'll just do, <laughs> we'll just do batch scripting for right now. Um, create a look look for a USB device, and then once that our specific device, because I've got two here, our uh, standard like I said HID USB, and then I've got just you know. A all data CO84 gigabyte drive. I mean, this is just standard out of the package. The only thing I've done to it is made a carefully cra crafted file file folder structure on it, which is necessary for this attack. And I've taken a little uh, gold or silver sharpie and put HH on there for a little hacker. So, so any questions so far? So give me one quick second while I pull this up. Mike, any questions there, man? Uh, not yet. Cool. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I changed your password for you. Thank you, Marcus. Mark, a great password. That's quite a recycle bin. Thank you. <laughs> so well, I'm gonna pull up this real quick, but I'm also gonna pull up. Some, uh, you named it. <laughs> you're not named it. It shrinks from you. <laughs> Can you see that? Can you guys see that pretty good? No. No. Command plus. You mean command more plus. bigger. Command plus. It doesn't work in text friendly. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> How do I zoom then? You can't. It's text friendly. You know what? Hold down Control and download Sublime Text. Control what? Oh yeah. The Windows bit that works just fine. It's all right. We're gonna turn something on. You know, we're gonna flip your scrolling in natural. It would be wonderful. Oh, so you're using. Uh, oh wow, flipping in natural scrolling will the presentation. This is gold. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can choose not to, but thank you. <laughs> that would be screwed up the rest of the time. <laughs> Stay off, yeah. Ooh. What's that? Ooh. What's that? What's going on? He's typing in Dvorak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do Dvorak too. Typing our heart. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. What version of OS X is this? This looks horrible. There we go. Look at that. Okay, look at that. All right. Very much. Yeah. Mm. So, how do we go back out from that? <laughs> Old I'll call it back. We know we'll, we'll get back to that in a second when it's time to when it's time to do that. So uh, uh, you could just use Vim. Hey, I like that. <laughs> that. That was we knew that was coming. <laughs> if you hold down Control and scroll up or down, so two yeah. finger scroll, oh, it'll shrink or yeah. grow. Yeah. It's pretty slick. And, it, so and control, you can move around the screen by just dragging to the edge of the screen. Right. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to go over a couple things first. So before we get into the, the guts of the 
one-two punch of this. I want to explain how it works first. So, because if, if I just were to plug this in and then just do this, you're going to see a whole bunch of blank happen, and that's just no fun. And I want to explain how it works. So, if you were to write just a batch script on a Windows 7 or 10 machine uh, to do this, um, what we're going to do is you're going to write this right here, and I'll, I'll explain for you again. Is everyone familiar with batch scripting? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I, I'll try. Not, I'll try not to be too too technical. If there are people who would like me to be, please jump in and say yes. I, I would like to understand that. Um, so start off like with any other script. Throw your echo off. Okay. Um, is that a typo or is that supposed to be like that? Hey, look at that! I'm not sure your script will work. <laughs> no, it's definitely not going to work at that point. <laughs> I thought you were doing some special maybe. It's in that one, I guess. Some of that, some of that uh, pseudo stuff you're doing. Better. Some of that pseudo stuff. Yeah. So I'll show you some cool pseudo stuff here when we're done. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the I pseudo. Anyway. So um, what we're going to do, what you do in this is we do basic if-then statements. Okay? And again, I use something kind of clunky, but for our purposes here, it's going to work just fine. Again, if you want to use a higher script, a higher programming language, please feel free to do that. But for this purpose, we use. Nothing makes you feel better than Windows Bash script. I know. Right? I mean, it is just. You gotta turn. Oh, let's, you gotta let's, turn let's. <laughs> <laughs> so if you didn't catch some of the guys, some of the guys I work with really, really uh, do not like Windows stuff. So, but that's okay. It takes all types. I kind of like it. No, you don't. I'm, 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 I'm trying. I'm trying. trying. Shut the PowerShell. <laughs> That's true. You're gonna you're you're gonna really love me here in a second with that. So, so first we're gonna start off by saying we create the while, and we're gonna say we're gonna look for a couple things. We're gonna go three delimiters over, and we're gonna look for this particular set of this particular uh, list right here. So we're gonna say echo list while and blah blah blah. So if I take just that, actually you know what? Close the control out. There we go. Nice. So back back over to my virtual machine real quick. Bring up a command prompt. Oh, nice. So what? Button. Just nothing. Just nothing. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> nothing. Just nothing. Send my what large icons you have. <laughs> I'm trying to help. Again, I wear glasses. I understand that some people can't see, so I'm trying to get the world famous. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. So go back in, going back into command prompt and just hitting uh, that list volume disk part, you're gonna get you're gonna list after disk your disk volumes, okay? So um, again, this is the one two punch I was talking about. So the drive I was talking about earlier, that's this is named on the drive. You can pop it in and it'll be called. I'll show you real quick what it's called, just 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 so you know, just so we're not completely Lost here. It's actually called HH, as you see. So my little driver right there is called HH. So if I do a like I said a list for that, you're not going to see that. Now, if I go and say specifically find for a string that says HH, we're going to find it this time because it is actually listed. I've actually got got the silly thing plugged in now. So I'm going to paste that and hey, found my drive. Now if I unplug it, run that particular again. You're gonna return nothing because again, it's right here and I'm plugged in. Does that make sense to everybody where I'm, where I'm going with that train of thought? Let's go back over to the uh, let's go back over the code real quick. So now, now that I've got that, now that I'm looking for that, if HH drive which again I'm saying is this right here, HH, because that's right here. If it returns equals nothing, then it's going to jump down, time out at three seconds, and roll back. Again, it's that if then got kind of clunky, got awful, if then. So it's going to do that in perpetuity until 
I plug in my drive, and it's going to say, else, break, go down to while, and say, hey, this is where our payload is executed, and on this specially crafted drive that's got the specially crafted file system that has a specially crafted demo.bat in there, it says, if you see that, go ahead and jump down to that. Does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. If I, lose, if I lose you for a second, please just say stop, back up. So are you actually expecting this to work? Huh? Are you expecting this to work? Yes, I am. Plug it in. What is the HHS on the uh, the last line there? Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I just thought maybe you were doing something magical. All right. Okay, so it's it's a live code review of the yeah, yeah live okay. code review of the uh, batch file. Yeah, so thank it. you very much for code review. So let me <laughs> check this into yeah. So I'm going to be completely honest with you. I, I actually threw a couple of errors there with Brian knows that I like. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. That's what I'm, yeah. So <laughs> giving you a chance to catch them. Right. Anyway, yeah. this, 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 yeah. 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 It's, it's a little, the managers appreciate that. Yeah. They, 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 they like this. They like this. They their stuff. Yeah, that's pretty. Sometimes that is what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually come back and I made this batch file wait. And it does exactly what it says. So I'm just going to throw this wait file, okay? And it does exactly what you just what you just saw it do. It's going to say, every three seconds, do I see something? No. Start over. Do I see something? No. Start over. What it's waiting for, we know. It's this guy right here. <laughs> So and I'll show you, so I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to show you what it just did. The demo.bat that we just talked about a second ago. Come back over here. We're going to look at that for a second. So again, so you see that. So come back over and so out. Is it supposed to be an LSIF or something there? A what? An yeah, LSIF? So what it does, at the very end of the wait, it calls demo.bat. And what demo.bat does is does some batch foo. And my batch foo is strong. Oh, okay. Um, so it's going to echo out. And you really don't have to put this echo out installing Windows Update. That's more just for obfuscation um, because a couple of things I'm going to do in, in a few minutes are going to make that obsolete. But assuming that some of the stuff that I do here doesn't work on your particular device or something happens, the machine's got a little different setup. This will still pop up and it'll make it look like it's doing, like it's installing Windows updates. And what you can do is you can actually drop down underneath Windows update and put in, you know, columns, 14 across, 15 slide, put colors and make it actually look like Windows updates are doing something. So you can add a little more obfuscation that way if that's what the attacker wants to do. But again, this is all about system administration back in the files, not stealing stuff. So, so up here, after it does that, it's going to set a destination, and I'm going to zoom into that because I really, really, really like this. That particular variable right there, you see it tilde deal d0. That is going to call the letter drive of whatever the ducky, or in this case, the HH drive is. Now, Windows is based on some legacy DOS stuff, so it's got it's to have drive letters, which is really weird. So, unlike Unix, which doesn't have to do that, so that's why this tilde D0 is very important, because if you didn't have that, it's going to not find what you're looking for. This is just a wildcard variable, if you want to think of it like that. And then it's going to make a directory, and it's going to say, let's copy whatever you say, say right here. So everyone's familiar with what X copy does, so that's exactly what it sounds. It's going to X copy. User profile, which I've already stated up here, documents and destination, and another, another little cool bit of bash foo is going to make it completely invisible. So we're obfuscating here, just in case it pops up. We're going to say it's installing Windows updates. Well, not really like it. But if it just happens to pop up, it's going to go null, and you're not going to see anything happen. 
So the name of the game here is, again, for system administration, is you want to make sure that the user at the end of the day uh, is not inconvenienced if you're backing these files up. But if you're, so we're doing this as a system admin hack? <laughs> well, I, I mean, that's, I mean, and I, yes, because, I, again, I was a system administrator. I was a system administrator. Trick the users into backing up their computers on the USB files. I was a system administrator for several years. And I, I know one thing about myself. There's a whole thing that says, there's a thing in the matrix where it says, uh, Timic Nocte, I think, it means know thyself. And I know thyself. Myself is lazy. <laughs> Laziness <laughs> brings automation. Automation All right. brings I think awesome you're, I think you're off topic, though. This is a hack. Not <laughs> I, a I, derailed, hack I think you derailed a little bit there, but hey, there we go. So that's what that calls, and we go document set. So good so far. I hope I didn't get too far off topic there. I do apologize. So we good. Carry on. So carrying on. So we're going to back out a little bit more. <laughs> so. You guys yeah, beat up in on, on him like he says, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is every day. He all do this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being, I'm being, I'm being yeah. He's, he's actually helping. He's helping back a lot. Uh, just met you guys for the first time. No one, no one. So, well, so, so poor guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm like a piece of carbon. This is pressure and time. You know what happens in pressure and time and carbon? You become a diamond. You're watching a diamond. You're watching a diamond. That's the same thing. JJ loves to talk about JJ. Or AJ in this case. I think he just made a new nickname for himself. Yeah. Diamond. That's a stripper name we use. Ah, there we go. Crazy. So taking the command we just did with uh, demo.bat, there's actually a pause in there, so that's what I've done right here is I've paused it up for, for a second or two, so you can actually see that the uh, document is paused. So I can go over here to my drive and show you that there's nothing here right now, okay? But continuing with it, hit enter. Why, 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 what did it just create? Did the other thing go away already? It it's did. All, it's all done. It's all done. All right. That was not much. Took, took about took about ten seconds, right? Or we'll say we'll call it a nice round ten because I like powers of ten. <laughs> so that, as we learned, as we learned earlier, <laughs> what? Come on, come on. It has nothing to do with anything, <laughs> but you like it, so you can talk about it. <laughs> so earlier, I talked about how it creates the. Uh, creates the user profile documents and it's gonna actually copy user profile documents and that's what's happened right here is that that has happened. My documents folder on my computer has created that and it's say a bunch of um, uh, cursor files because I really, really, really like cursor files and I want to save them in my documents file. Uh, I also have the secret to life which we'll go over here at the very end of this. Uh, the secret to life in all things. So all, all in one K too. All yeah, which is exactly. amazing. Wow. So, it's pretty happy. <laughs> So I show you that, and we'll go ahead and delete that. So, so this is on the hard drive, my little flash drive. I'm going to delete that, so there's no confusion later. Um, go ahead and pull that out. I showed you all of that right then and there to demonstrate what's about to happen next. Because if I didn't, like I said earlier, what I'm about to show you is going to be pretty quick. So, part one of this attack uh, is to kill this right here and kill this, is I am on a, okay, again, this is sysadmin, we'll go sysadmin, but if we're on a pen test, and I've been contracted by, uh, I used the example last time of Bruce Wayne, so I've been contracted by Perry, uh, what was his last name of the Daily Planet? Perry what? The editor, whatever. The editor-in-chief of Daily Planet. I've been contracted by him to find, to make sure that my employees are not leaving their computers on. Well, I have to walk past Clark Kent's computer, okay? So this is Clark Kent's computer, and I've got my duck right here. It's in its, it's in its nice case. Looks like a USB, and I plug it in. I say, Clark Kent, you're mine. <laughs> so give that a second. This thing. 
problem with using VMs is that sometimes they don't quite recognize. So that's I do apologize. Just the, yeah, the, that was yeah. a fun protocol. Yeah, live demos. Live demos. And live code reviews. And live code reviews. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Really killing the effect there. Yeah. Isn't, isn't your Mac just not even trying to. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So it's all that. So what if I close that window before it finishes? Yeah. So I'm assuming that Clark Kent has walked away to go save the world for a few minutes because he's <coughs> Superman. I'm sorry. That's said that loud. I'm sorry. It's the hair. That's it. It's the hair. That's it. What's going on? Glasses. So what, and I'll explain what just happened there with that bit in a second. So I'm gonna plug this in now. Rubber, uh, the uh, just not the rubber duck, just the flash drive, the HH flash drive. Connect Windows because it's VM. Give about five seconds. Open up HH. Going to HH. And what do you know? All my files have been copied from dropping this in and then plugging it in a flash drive. Two part attack. Pretty cool, huh? Now, I actually skipped ahead a little bit, got a, got a little excited because I do that sometimes, but I did want <laughs> I did want to explain that particular bit right there, the um, what just happened on the inject side, uh, this rubber duck the little bit you blew up, you saw right there. So again, as I mentioned earlier, no, that is not, no, 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 no. Sorry guys. Where is it? Yeah, there we go. So I wanted to explain what just happened with the duck right here. So again, I mentioned earlier that this has been crafted and done into a bunch of cool different things, but it also has a very, very basic version of the basic language on it. So if you can read this, this kind of looks like basic, if anyone's familiar with that. Uh, what it did, what I, what you do, and what I did on this was, I, this is actually written as a bin file onto the duck, onto the SD card, and that's what's called first within that. And again, it acts as a keyboard, 1,000 keystrokes a minute. So when you plug this in, it acts as a keyboard. So what it's looking at, it's like, it doesn't see duck, key, duck USB, it says, I guess, whatever the PID or PID of this is. So it's like, it, says it, thinks it's keyboard. it absolutely thinks it's an HP keyboard. So, so it's going to write this right here, and this is a bit of duck food, not my term. Um, bypassing UAC at the very, very beginning, because UAC is very important. Uh, it's a good safety precaution, but go ahead and bypass it very simply, because again, uh, computers trust keyboards and input devices from humans because they think that humans are doing know what they're doing. So if things that you're human, it's gonna let you through. Remember that. <laughs> so again, a couple of delays right there. Immediate change over to the temp directory. Beautiful. Can I ask one question? Yeah, please go ahead. So for bypass UAC, do you have administrative rights in your computer? On that one? Yeah. Um I've used so i I've, I've so I have it on this one, yes, but there's something that I've shown these guys before with, with a particular script that I kind of didn't inadvertently brought up right there, which plug, uses this again to make the computer talk to you, which doesn't have UAC, or they're not administrators and it bypasses UAC in the same way. Okay. So all I'm doing right here is I'm saying, I'm bringing up a PowerShell string that starts UAC run as, and then I'm, it brings, brings up the UAC as like, hey, because when you bring up UAC, it brings up the, would you like to bypass this, yes or no? And it just simply says yes and then enter and boom, there you go, three. So you're through. Does that make sense? Yes. Good question, thank you. Uh, and then again, I'm gonna do a little more obfuscation and hide this. Mm -hmm. um, change it over to temp directory, which buries it deep in the system 32 file structure, which is awesome. <laughs> and is, I mean, because that's a trusted file sector. Oh man, that's great. So um, but if it's already there, it's going to go ahead and delete that weight.bat, which I'm creating. Erase, excuse me, erase, because you want to make sure that your file systems are cleaned up. Always, always, always clean your file systems up. If you're sysadmin or your penetration tester, clean your stuff up. 
Um, so once that's erased, then it's going to do this right here. That that right there is one of my second favorite ways to put stuff in because in Linux you can actually echo stuff into a file uh, and create it by typing instead of saying open notepad, do this, save as this. No, you can copy con wait.bat, which creates, you can name that anything you want to, but that creates the file that way as a batch file or BBS. And then anything after that, which is everything I showed you earlier, which is the exact same, it copies it straight into that and makes it into a batch file. So you, again, you're not having to pull a file down from paste bin. You're not having to pull it down from somewhere you're, else. You're actually typing the file. You're copy. actually typing it in right then and there as a keyboard. As a keyboard. Whoa. Awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Awesome. Um, and then the third part of this. So, so by the way, in an infosec environment, when you're trying to prevent something like this, the only way you can is to have trusted pairs of devices. So you have this laptop, you issue this USB keyboard that has a serial number and you know manufacturer code and the whole nine yards, and you say, okay, if this USB keyboard connects, we'll allow it to connect. Anything else is blacklisted. So you have, you have to have a full-on hardware control issue whitelist per device to do this. The only people I've seen doing this thus far are the banks. Like, we'll get an auditor show up from Wells Fargo, and his mouse, if his mouse dies, he has to send it back in and get a new one. If, wow. he, if he tries to go down to his local uh, Best Buy and get a mouse put, it won't work. Now, what about BitLocker? If you have BitLocker turned on and it requires a USB, a USB device to put in, but I guess it thinks it's a keyboard. It's a keyboard. So it's not right. That's the, Again, it's a storage device. computers yeah. trust human interface devices. Yeah. That's the basis of the bad USB attack, yeah. which I've got listed in, in the notes after the fact. So if you want to read a little bit more about bad USB, Take an hour, read that, get familiar with it. It's it is it's awesome. scary. It's awesome, but at the same time, if you understand it, it makes administration of your devices a lot easier and makes attacks like that a lot less uh, scary. So that's part. Of what I showed you right there is part two. Now, I mentioned earlier about making this whole process invisible. You didn't see where it, where it set up there. Uh, you know, checking, checking, checking. You didn't see that at all, did you? Again. So what? The way we accomplish that go down a little bit, is by creating in biz.bbs. I promised I'd use a little BBS in here, so here it is. Um, we create uh, a BBS file called in biz.bbs, and what it does is create object, run shell script, and again, this is this is a command that says whatever I input into here is going to read over into here. And what that says is, I want to run whatever I put into here. I want to run that invisibly. I don't want to see it at all. So I create that, control Z, save it. And then I say, I want a W script, which is a way to call a script, a BBS script. And I want to call script in biz.bbs on wait.bat. So the whole process happens in biz. So once I plug that, the Huggable Hacker Drive in, it ran it, pulled the stuff off, and then stopped the script, cleaned everything up, killed it out of temp.cd, or cd.temp, which I showed you earlier, cleaned it out, and then no one's ever the wiser. And that's a quick and easy drive by attack. So scroll back up on that. So, uh, did anyone see that again? Because that was kind of fun. <laughs> So in, in our environment, we put effort into blocking USB flash drives. Mm -hmm. Great, right? You can't back up a computer to a hard drive. But we have to basically have to block external keyboards, and um, someone's going to come up with a mouse attack next. Yeah. Um, uh, so I actually I actually brought in a keyboard because I want to show you this because this is the next evolution of my attack. Um, a Dell keyboard, folks. Oh, so <laughs> actually, if, if it's next evolution. Cheap, Brian, if it's okay with you, I'd like to share. It's the least common denominator. Sure. It's the so, I actually have multiple ducks. These are all ducks right here. I'll walk you back, please. <laughs> Those are all ducks. They're in USB containers that you can get. One of, my, one of the original ones that I used was, anyone familiar with Stephen Covey? 
I used to have a, I used to have a, Stephen, a bunch of Stephen Covey covers on that. And so Stephen Covey's a big corporate guy and he's like all into training people about corporate stuff. So I used to have a bunch of those. And I put them on there. People say, oh God, Stephen, because he would give out a flash drive with his entire course on it. And so if you saw one of those, it's like a thousand dollar course that's just laying there. Oh, Stephen Covey, let me go and take that. So that's all on USB. My next evolution of this is to hack the work together. Try to pop this open without that would be a terrible idea, Bel Air, because right. you will be immediately shamed. <laughs> it's all okay. mm -hmm. Bear with me, go. There we go. So, I think, has anyone ever taken a keyboard apart before? Come on, that flash drive again, please. Or the flash drive. Once on purpose. Once on purpose. <laughs> Are you before you fly? <laughs> so if you've ever taken a keyboard apart, there's not really much to it. There's a piece of uh, silver, uh, there's a piece of classic here that's got some silver on it that connect, completes the connections. But all the brains are right there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. Huh? But there's the brains of it right there. And as you can see, USB's got the USB cable right there. So you would pop. This bad, so the evolution of the attack that I'm talking about would you pop this bad boy out, take a duff like that, take the USB bed off of it, uh, solder together a few things right there, plug that in, you've got yourself a, a dynamic keyboard. My computer, my keyboard doesn't work. Oh, God. Oh, no, 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 no. You better. Hey, I'm from uh, Pen Test. Hey, I'm from IT. I've heard your keyboard is bad. Uh, my keyboard's okay. Well, you don't want this brand new keyboard that I've got in a box? I've got a brand new one for you. Yeah, sure. All right. Plug it in. So, and it does this thing right there. Dude, I'm sorry, I got a lemon. This happens from time to time. Would you like a would you like maybe get another one? Yeah, sure, man. Fine, cool. There you go. Bob's your uncle. Bob's UK. So that's a uh, that's the next evolution. Like I said, I'm pretty bad at soldering. I'm very actually I'm fairly weak at soldering and uh, schematics. So yeah, that's my second. So your Arduino is very. Uh, it will be eventually because what I'm going to do. I'll put this back on. Is well, thank you. Sorry, Miller. What I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that connection right there, keep it. I'm going to, you know, find either unsolder that connection right there. Could you let it pass through those? Huh? Could you let it pass? I could. If I, if I could. I could absolutely do that and make the keyboard work the same way. That thought has occurred. Then you can capture the keystroke. Well, see, key, keystroke, keystroke captures a different animal altogether. And that's that's another project that I – yeah, I mean, it's, another, it's, it's absolutely – and absolutely what you can do with that – with the same kind of uh, <clears throat> drop this right here. Thank you, Mark. Same concept here uh, with the copy con, um, which one I showed you, which one I showed earlier. Uh, there we go. Crap, where is it? So you know how I said copy con right here, wait dot bat, and drop that file into it because I'm basically just typing it in, typing it in Control Z and save it. What you can do is create a VBS script because there are plenty of examples out there of VBS scripts that act as keystroke injection or keystroke capture and send it off somewhere else. Say the first bit of that would say, here is a DN here's a, a a shell, a DNS shell that goes back to a remote server. So go ahead and run that persistently in the background. And every time it put it hide it in the startup or somewhere else, run it, or hide a pointer in startup that says go to C D temp, run this anytime it restarts. And it's always running in the background. And then what you would do, the second part of that attack would be, say, uh, you have the keystroke uh, injection, or keystroke, keep saying injection, I'm sorry. <laughs> keystroke, or keylogger, as you said earlier, and just have that, say, every 50, 60 characters, it says, pump it out to the server using netcat, not NC, but netcat. On port, we'll say 9999. So every 50 keystroke, pump it out. Every 50 keystroke, pump it out. And it's just listening, listening, listening. Yeah, that's an example. That could work that way too. Exactly. So, that'd be fun. That'd be interesting if you could write that. Yeah. That would be fun. But again, this is all about this. This is less about hacking than it is more about showing the problems that we have and how to how to mitigate those. But I'm all about hack all the things, drink all the beer. So. <laughs> Mike, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you get all that? You good? Yeah. Cool. So. Now, let's go back over here. So, another 
questions? Anything want to say that again? Anything else? Okay. okay. Let's see. Takeaways. Okay. Takeaways are few. Uh, we have a few of them. So first one, obviously, and this I think this goes without saying, but again, it's one of those. Never plug an unknown USB into your. <laughs> Okay, just don't plug it in. If you don't know where it's from, you don't trust it, don't plug it in. That's, that's the first way to do that. Uh, I mean, again, I showed, you, I showed you how a keyboard, again, could potentially be modified to do that. Mice are the exact same way. You can modify it with a couple of, a little bit of soldering points, bam, Bob's your uncle. Twice I've said that, keep counting that. Uh, Brian kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. Uh, my, Brian with a Y, not an I, sorry. We um, touched on this a little bit earlier. Uh, use whitelist or blacklisting of your devices. Um, and like you said, kind of stole my thunder just a touch there, so I'm not going to be too mad about it. You can hear it later, it's fine. <laughs> um, uh, what you do is we, we use a particular type of software that allows us to go in and say, I have a device, I have device X, which is my PC, it's my Mac. And I want to have HH hard drive, which is MAC address 11, or it's PID, excuse me, it's a, it's a, I forget what PID stands for. Vendor ID and then personal ID, I think. PID, PID, it's 1122334455. It's a MAC address. It's, it's essentially what it is, it's a MAC address. So I'm going to say that this right here is whatever the MAC address is here, whatever the MAC address is, pair it with these two, and nary the twain shall never say anything else. It's similar to what we use. That's one way to do it. Uh, and if we get an exception, someone will say, hey, I've got a whole mess of stuff that I need to look at like right now, and it's we can't do it through the normal channels. Okay. You have a day to do this, and you go in, you said it says, exception policy, exception policy is, one day, one week, whatever. And then at the end of that, 24 hours from then, or 23, 23.59.59, it's gonna say, done, no more. No shit for you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I tell that joke every time, and someone, someone always laughs, thank you. Ah. And then again, that kind of touches on the having an exception-based policy for USBs, um, in which case, make sure that your AV is always up to date. Having update AV is very, very important. Make sure that's always up to date and go. Uh, and if you want to go, if you have a, and this one's more for a smaller enterprise, if you have, don't have like 300 computers in your enterprise, <laughs> uh, this one's more for small, small office setups. Just go ahead and disable uh, USB on the BIOS level. Set a really strong password on BIOS and say no more, bio, no more USBs on the BIOS level and if you need it, give me a reason why we fully document it, how long it's going to be, and then I come back and I say, you're done at that point. I didn't connect your keyboard and mouse at that point. Because, mm. you know. You would use PS2 at that point. You know, good luck finding computers today that have. Mm. There is a, there's a few models, but I, I, hear what she, I, hear what, I hear what you're saying, mm. because I agree, because it is, it is getting more and more difficult, especially, especially laptops at this point. Again, it's small enterprise, but again, it's one of those, there's the nuclear option versus the carpet bomb option. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that's, you're splitting hairs at this point, and it's one of those. Oh, yeah. yeah. Possible, but it's, it's, still, it's still a USB device. Okay. Well, it's still got, I mean, if it has Bluetooth on it, yes, that's a perfect. That is, yeah. yeah, exactly. If you have something like that, that that's, that's an ideal option, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but, Again, we're, we're talking. We're, we're focusing more on, on that, the uh, USB bits, but no, that works perfect. Absolutely. Um, again, sure I don't have cancer, but it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> again, it's one of those. I'm giving you the worst case scenario on, on things, um, and then allowing you to make your decision based on what you think. I mean, you can you can tell me to go go push it if you want to. <laughs> so, uh, acknowledgements on everything so far. Uh, this will all be in the show notes, and I'll post this up. Um, USB rubber duck, again, if you want to go buy a couple, 42 bucks, really great to play with. <laughs> again, it's $42. It's really kind of a big investment for something that big. Uh, 
bad USB from SR Labs. If you want to go read up on that, again, take an hour to do that. Really, it will change your life and make things a lot, a lot easier when it comes to understanding these type of tax. I mentioned Sammy Camcar earlier. He did a homebrew version of this. He based it in out of C, C language, and a teensy Arduino. Uh, really, really sharp guy. Really like a lot of his work. Um, Net Hunter from Cali, uh, software based. You take the Nexus tablet, phone, works the same way. Uh, again, that's that's more of an offshoot of this the bad USB. Um, if you want to see, if you want to kind of see how these guys did it up here, I had five guys that actually posted a video similar to how they hide their attacks. A little similar, but kind of the same. Not different. It's actually way different, but look. And then again, how I based my attack on pod slurping down here. Uh, it's kind of old. <laughs> it's kind of outdated. Um, it's, it was back when the first iPods came out, but great reading if you'd like. So there's that. Uh, uh, questions? Concerns? Surprise language? Well, there's some good takeaways. Cool. So with that, I'd like to pop back a little bit and uh, do a quick little uh, discussion on the OSCP CH. Hey. So this, this was Brian's request. This was this was actually a request, and I do I do. If you have any requests, if you come, if you see, if you're on the Picker on Meetup page and you get in there and you have questions about things, you want to ask questions, please feel free to ask them. If you want to add something to them, please. Do you have any Michael Jackson? Do you have any Michael no. Jackson? Okay. I can I can do Thriller pretty well. Okay. That wasn't on video, so we're gonna go from there. Um, Sorry, Mike, you missed it. Sorry, <laughs> you gotta show up. I'm gonna do for you, Mike. <laughs> All right, um, so I'll start off by saying that um, I'm actually going out for my OSCP right now. It's offensive security professional. Um, oh, that's right. This is what you were asking about. Yeah, I'm actually going out for it right now. Yeah, it's a bit of a bear. <laughs> I'm gonna be straight up with you. It yeah, is. that's what that's what I'm wanting to know. Is how intensive is it? Um, how much time does it take? It's taken quite. It's taken quite a bit of my my free time. Uh, more more than I would like to admit. It's taken quite it's, a bit. It's it's stop. It, it's it's it, it's not for the faint of heart. And, and how does it compare to the CISSP? Uh, it's very. The CISSP is much more accessible from a just studying books perspective. Uh, some of these combo CISSP and OSCP is is very hireable. Um, the guy that uh, Josh replaced, my, my previous analyst, um, got both and then those hired him away um, <laughs> to start their red team. So OSCP took him and he, he's like Josh, he keeps out on hacking, the hacking part of, of the job. Um, he had a child right in the middle of this that kind of threw things off. Doing, I'm kind of in the same boat right now. <laughs> uh, by the way, but we, we did 60 days. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, last year up, if you were here, I actually left like right after that. My wife had, had my, my second child within, yeah, two, right within, within two hours of that. Josh uh, Jenkins, 26 uh, days. He brings the meet up. He brings the meet up. Yeah, yeah. and, and, and I personally, so everyone at the meet up knows, I personally thank the wife. <laughs> for <laughs> waiting for the meet up done. <laughs> <laughs> because priorities. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, it's it's a fairly it's a very very intensive course. Um, if you want to do it, it, again, there are there are trade offs. I mean, it's, while it is very intense, it's also very expensive as well. I mean, you're looking at fifteen hundred bucks for that. Now you think of videos? There, it's a video tech slash hands on slash reading style, and it gives you really good coursework, really good reading coursework, really good hands on, really good videos. I mean. It's really easy to understand the guy. You know, sometimes you get videos and training like that, and it's really hard to understand the guy and your value. The value versus what you're getting is this guy. You're getting value, and you're getting something. Okay, so I assume OSCP is higher than CEH. <sighs> what? The question was OSCP is higher than CH. CHE. CEH. Oh, yeah. oh, my death yeah. no, oh, it's hard. It's, it's hard. Right. <laughs> it's right. it's not a code review. As yeah. long as the right letters are in there, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> That's not getting merged, right? <laughs> right? Maybe not. <laughs> that's, that's, man, that, you guys are being really nice. Josh is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Josh is not getting a lot of sleep right now. <laughs> I've been here. 
I don't know enough about certified ethical hacker to, to really compare. What I can tell you about OSCP is the exercises get progressively harder, and when you get to the final ones, um, it's psychologically crushing. Uh, like uh, Mojo spent almost a month on the last two or three, um, trying and trying and trying again because they're not they're not um, they're not like one vulnerability. You have to find the right vulnerability to establish a beachhead, and then you have to pivot and attack another system using what beachhead you have here, which is limited, and find a way, to, you know, it's kind of almost like you're uh, claustrophobia, you're in pipes, and you're trying to find a way to squirm like him you know, around the corner, reach something else, that kind of dynamic towards the end, where you're leveraging one exploit on one system to get to another system, you know, burrow in deeper. It's the kind of stuff that professional, and I say professional, I mean professional hackers do, people who are paid to hack and, you know, are out there ripping off the hospitals and everybody else. Um, so it, I mean, it's, it gets to that level where you're, if you get the OSCP, you could be a malicious actor pretty effectively. Uh, but you understand what it takes for a malicious actor to actually do what they do. Which is why you do it. Right. To stop the bad guys, to stop the, because I mean, you look, you look, again, we go back to the, uh, the healthcare attack most recently. So you got, I heard, I was reading an article where it talked about, you know, there was a lady, she had to drive two hours to her her mom's or, you know, 80, 85 year old mom's doctor's office because the records were locked out and they couldn't do it. So, you know, so this lady's on a ventilator and stuff, and, you know, you know, people are going to, people could potentially die of this if they haven't already. And, you know, yeah. so the, you know, you do the OSCP so you can go after these kind of people that do this. Well, kind of or, or understand why um, the, the defense in depth matters so much and exactly how somebody takes an exploit that's further out and, turns it into something bigger and bigger. Uh, I've got, we've got a Pearl site sub subscription to Apple, and one of the courses that I'm always interested in, I, always, I like his videos, is Troy Hunt, who does the certified ethical hacker stuff. Mm -hmm. And I always like his videos because as a web developer, you know, SQL injection and all that kind of stuff on web forms, I always want to like be on the other side to be on the other side of the bad guy and get in. Right. So I look at the code that I've developed and is it secure? You know? Mm -hmm. And so I love, you know, Troy Hunt's videos because that it, it, it gives me a different perspective because I want to make sure I write good stuff. I don't, I don't want I, I really just yeah. that yeah. So th this is my non-paid plug here because I've actually bought this course. You got a couple days left if you'd like to. <laughs> But it gives you the training material for a lot of what you're talking about: Cisco CCNA security, uh, CDH, and then security plus. So it's a kind of a you know Cisco right The security uh, CCNA security is going to be really focused on you know Cisco stuff. So if you want to dig deep, a mile deep, and you know ten feet wide on Cisco, go for that. You know security certified and it's a little broader, and then certified up after it's a little even a little bit more broad. But no, if you want to have very diverse, you know it's thirty bucks. So, again, I like the course material. I've gone through a bit of it so far. You know, when the kids up and crying and all that fun stuff. <laughs> so, no, it's, it's really good material. And, you know, again, like I said earlier about value add and, you know, what you get out of it. So, it's good. I think one of the things that's different with OSCP is it is kind of a combined certification and training program. Every step of the way is hands on. You, you're, you learn something, you use it. You learn something, you use it. And as you, use it succeed in, in actually accomplishing the objective of the exercise, then you build on that in the next one. But, you know, it's not like you have a final test you have to pass. You've been taking the test all the way through, and, you know, you're developing skills. So as opposed to just watching videos, um, I think the way OSCP is structured is, is, in my mind, really a best practice on how these things ought to be done. Um, my brother John works at Google, and he had a friend. They both went to uh, the University of Texas at Dallas and, and uh, had an IT kind of degree, computer science. Um, but my brother John started writing software just to goof around at like 13 years old, 12 years old. And uh, his, his friend decided he wanted to become a software engineer, write software. 
started taking, uh, watching videos and trying to learn about it, et cetera. And he was telling my brother, well, I'm a developer now. And he was out there interviewing and so on. And, uh, and my brother really shot him down. Like, no, you're not really a developer yet. And, uh, you know, watch all these videos. And I'm like, no, no, no. And he threw him at an exercise site. which was basically like, okay, here's a problem. Solve it. Um, and you completely fall apart. Because watching the videos is a radically different thing from, from actually yeah. using those skills and understanding how to make all the pieces work. So um, I think OCP addresses that really well. I, so from a hiring perspective, somebody comes in with a CISSP, okay, there's probably some validity to that. Um, somebody comes in with an OSCP, I'm, I'm weighing that probably a lot more strongly in terms of practical experience to really understand what it takes to secure a system and have some awareness of you know, how vulnerabilities are leveraged and so on. Any other questions about that? Again, I'll have this link if you guys would like it. Please, uh, please let me know and I can get you that link again. 30 bucks. So, uh, flip back over to here. You're going to drop it in the meetup. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll drop it. Yeah, I was going to say, throw it in the meetup. That'd be great because. I will actually. I will, yeah. do, I will do that here. As soon yeah, I ran across that a couple of days ago. And, uh, That's a good price for something. Yeah, it's like yeah. 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 considering it's like almost nineteen hundred dollars for yeah. all of that. So that's a, a, that's a fair price. Yeah. Anything for ongoing education or exposure to stuff. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, it's one of those. I bought it and didn't work right for me. So what? So I bought it and it didn't work right for me. Once I got to learn smart, once it. Kicking over the learning smart and I created an account. It's like the course isn't there. So I, I got to be in touch with those guys. And see. So if, if you don't mind me taking a second just to look at it, would you, would you, you want to just, just get so I can look at it real quick? Just to see where you kind of got stuck? Yeah. So we got some new people here tonight. Those of you that um, didn't show up last time, welcome. Um, it's uh, you're, you're probably here on some levels because you can see that there are presentations booked out and kind of get a feel for what's going on. Uh, you are a part of making that a success. So the way we run meetups at HP5 is you benefit, you contribute, and the community grows. Everybody gets a chance to present, and you get to present on any security topic you're interested in learning about. You don't have to be an expert. You just have to share.